Give him praise one more time. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to see a beautiful crowd here today. You guys are awesome and beautiful. From Randy, you good looking. Hey, all handsome up here. And everybody's looking good. We got grooms and brides in the house and uh, all those good things. We even got Cade in the house back there. He, uh, he wouldn't shake my hand, but he's still here, which is good, right? So, uh, he's a good guy. We like him very well. Uh, so this morning is Vision Sunday. And as you know, I'm a pretty peculiar pastor. Uh, we get ready to start our seventh year of vision here at the church. And this year will be very different. Uh, my ministry has been basically since day one uh, to teach people to, uh, with my pastoral ministry, let me rephrase that, not the uh, evangelism ministry before that, but, but has been to disciple people and to grow them and to teach them to be better at well, who they are and what they do. Over the years, some people have literally thought that maybe I'm looking down on them because I'm trying to, to lift them up and get them stronger. But the truth is that simply want you to be the best you can be for the Lord. And so this year's vision, if you've got a pen in your hand, look at your pen. Uh, it says, my vision is. My vision is. Is Every year you get a pen from me or from the church. Uh, it's not me personally, but from the church. And every year we have a vision for the church on it. This year the vision is completely peculiar, if you will. The vision is about you, not the church. The vision is about you and not the church. And as that being said, you've heard me say this maybe before, and I'm going to say it again and again and again. Jesus did not win the victory on the cross of Calvary. Jesus did not win the victory on the cross of Calvary. Jesus won the victory in the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, if I can tell you how that happened, very simply, it was like this. Jesus said, and I'm paraphrasing, I came from heaven to earth. I've lived 33 years and done exactly what you wanted me to do. Now, tomorrow they are going to begin the process of crucifying me, and I don't want to do this. To the point that the scripture says his sweat was as great drops of blood. He said, I don't want to do this. <coughs> Nevertheless, it's not what I want. It's what you want, Father, period. He settled it right there. So going to Calvary was simply going through the motions. Now, it may not look that way, but the truth is there was a valley of decision, and he had to decide before he got there. If you're going to have a vision for your life of where God wants to take you, and the, the scripture that he gave me for you is this. It's from Revelation to the Philadelphian church, and it says Philadelphia means brotherly love, but it literally says this. I have opened a door that no man can shut. But if we do not have a vision as an individual, we will never, ever, ever get where we're going. Amen. My first youth pastor was late every Sunday. And I said, you plan on being late. He said, no, I don't. I plan on being here on time. But traffic or something, I said, stop. If you plan to be here at the very minute church starts, you're planning on being late because something will come up. You don't have a true plan for what you want. There is no one in this room that is financially stable that does not have a financial plan. Mike Adams, can I get an amen? amen. amen. You need it here. The reality, you know, we often look at people and we go, well, they were born with this or they were born. That has nothing to do with it. It is the fact that they created a plan and they followed a plan and they became financially stable. Do you know what in today's Today's world, what a financial plan is for about 80% of Americans, I'm going to be okay when I, get my, uh, when I get my tax return. I'm going to be okay. Everything. And then the next month, we're flat broke again and we're fighting because we have no plan of action. For those of you that, are, that have, like me, and I'm just going to use myself because I'm going to share my vision that God gave me too, but we're going to get into the scripture in a minute. But for me... Six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, ten weeks ago, my sugar levels were at 400. And the doctor said, okay, we're going to start doing the shots. And I said, can I have three months? I don't want to do that. 
This morning, my sugar was 131. <laughs> Yesterday, 129. The reality of that is this. I had to make a plan and a decision to fix my life. If you truly want something, and I love it when people say, well, I couldn't do that. That's not true. The truth is, if you make a plan, you will make it happen. If you want a new car bad enough, you'll find a way to get it. If you want something bad enough, you'll find a way to get it. And so my vision for me this year is this. God said, I want you to reevaluate everything. Your ministry, your church, and I want you to reevaluate scripture. And I said to God, I've been studying this book for 25 years. And he said, then take everything you know and look at it from a different angle. In the last few weeks, it has changed my life. Today we'll be reading from the book of James. My least favorite book in the Bible. But I love Proverbs. How I many love Proverbs, right? Proverbs rock. Do you know James is just Proverbs? It's plain, it's simple, it's to the point. Do this, don't do this. Do this, this works, don't do this, this works. And it's simple, but I've always looked at it as a book of rebuke to me. When I feel good about myself, I read James so I can feel bad about myself, right? Because James will put me there. <coughs> But now I'm looking at it from a different perspective. It's literally one of the easiest books in the Bible. Count all your troubles, joy. Try that. Every time you go through something, say, praise God, I get, God's going to do something. All of a sudden, your troubles aren't as bad as they once were. Right. It changes things. James writes those things. My vision is to stop. My vision is 2020. It's clear. I've got to reevaluate ministry. I've got to reevaluate how I run this church. Because if I do the same things over and over and we never get beyond where we're at, the truth is that's insanity, it's ridiculous, and it's ignorant. If I get my paycheck and I blow it all day one and I've got 29 days to go, I'm going to starve 29 days. That is not the way to lose weight. If you have a plan for anything in your life and God's number one and you have zero plan to grow yourself, I know there are men and women in this church that have literally got up every morning doing your Bible study, but if you've been doing that for five years, maybe it's time to stretch that a little bit. Maybe it's time to do something just a little bit different. What is your vision if you were honest with yourself don't answer, but if you're honest with yourself, you have a vision for where you want to be, you want to vote, you're working a plan to get a vote, am I wrong? It may not be working well, but you're working a plan to get a vote, right? I wanted a nicer boat than I had. I went down and found a piece of junk and rebuilt it, and now I got the coolest boat in, in Oregon. I do, I love it, it's amazing, and I got nothing in it because I built it, but here's the truth. If you want it, You've got to have a plan. And almost everyone in this room, if you admit it, you don't have a plan for your spiritual future. It's whatever God gives me on Sundays, what I live with from here on. Mm -hmm. And then what I get next week. And we have to have a plan. So as we begin to reevaluate or whatever it is for you, it might be for you. It might be that you need to give a little more. It might be that financially you're struggling and you just need God to do something and God said, if you give to me, if you give back your tithes and your offerings, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings. I'll rebuke the devourer for your behalf. It might be that you just need to say, I can't afford it, but I'm giving anyway. It might be that you need to show up on Wednesday night. More than likely, it'll be something for you personally. But if you don't have a plan, you won't grow. If you don't have a plan... You won't grow. So, what is your vision? You may not know that yet. But you cannot have a vision without a decision to have a vision. You've got to make a decision to have a vision in your life. Jesus had a plan before he left heaven. In fact, he had a plan in Genesis 1-1. 
People say, well, the first covenant didn't work. He created a new one. It was in the plan from day one. Do you know every man, woman, and child was predestined, I use that word loosely, to be born again? Not everyone will choose that because the decisions that they make will go the other direction, and there's nothing we can do to change that. But at the end of the day, every person has an option. What will you choose to be your vision for 2020? Because it will determine how your life grows spiritually. And at the end of the day, while I love the fact that my financial portfolio can grow, I love that I can get my health in shape somewhat, at the end of the day, what matters is what will be when I leave this world. That's all that's going to matter. Is what me, when, I, when I leave here, that's all that's going to matter. And if I never do anything or never make a plan to spiritually move forward, if I have no vision and no goal and no direction for the future, I can scream the loudest prayers on planet Earth, but if I never grow, you know, we love those services where everybody gets slain in the spirit and there's no preaching and all that stuff, but if you get the feel-good, goo-goo, goosebumps and you leave here and you got nothing to stand on when you walk out that door, you're going to end up flat broken. That's why I want to teach you things. That's why I slow it down sometimes so that we can learn. Let me get you to the scripture and we'll move on. Because this isn't a beat you up message, believe it or not. James chapter 4. I, you, I won't even ask you to stand this morning. We'll do something different. Beginning with verse 7. <coughs> Submit yourselves therefore to God. Submit yourself to God. What does he want you to do to get to the next level? Submit yourself to God. Do you know how many times we hear this next part? Oh, the devil's been giving me heck. The devil's been running over me. The devil, the Bible says if you submit yourself to God, resist him, he has to get away. You don't have an option. Well, I'm resisting him and he won't leave. Have you tried submitting to God? Oh. Amen. Oh. That's almost a proverb, isn't it? It's actually a very simple thing to do. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Well, that would work, Pastor, except if I draw nigh to him, that means I'm going to have to show him some things in my life. He knows they're there already. Amen. <laughs> not hiding them by not talking to him. You're just prolonging the agony. Right. I love it when someone says, the doctor can do surgery to take the cancer out, and you'll be cancer-free from now on. Well, I'm going to wait seven years for that to happen. I'm going to wait till the very last. Why? You're still going to go through the surgery. You're still going to have the process of having it taken out. There's still going to be the process. Why not get that thing over with? Well, the crazy thing about motorcycle riders, and you know this, uh, I have a dear doctor friend in Tennessee, and he says this. He says, when you're in a motorcycle accident and your leg is crushed, people will fight for three years to save the leg and then take it off. He said, but if they just go ahead and take the leg off, six weeks from now, they'll be learning to walk again with a prosthetic, but they will not. They'll fight for something, even though they know it's a losing battle. And yet when it comes to God, sometimes we just don't want to draw nigh to him. Be afflicted and mourn and weep and your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judge his brother, speak evil of the law of God and judge the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. And there is only one judge, one lawgiver. Verse 13. Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be of your morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For you ought to say, if the Lord will, he shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your things, all such rejoicing is evil. And this is the verse that really hit home. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Amen. Ouch. Ouch. 
To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, it is sin. You know, one of the things I've had to evaluate, gritting my teeth and complaining, we don't have the people to have two services, not only in numbers, but we don't have it in workers. And I'm killing the workers we got because others haven't stepped up to help yet. As of today, we start Sunday school at 9 a.m., we start church at 10 a.m. For those that want to get out a little earlier, we'll do that. For those that want to come to the early, we're losing a couple of families that only can come to the early service. And believe me, as a pastor, it breaks my heart. But I just don't have the means to continue it at this point. I just don't have enough people to make those things happen. So I have to evaluate those things. Starting today, we do one service. Times will be 9 a.m. for Sunday school, 10 a.m. for church. Because we have to do what's best for the body of Christ as leaders. If not, we need to sell ice cream, right? don't grow spiritually. There's no one that can make you do that but you. And if you think God's going to dump it on you without you working a plan, you are sadly mistaken. Maybe the plan for you is you like to drop those four-letter words occasionally. Maybe you need to make a conscious effort. Remember the old swear jars back in the day? What will it take for you to write down a plan? Habakkuk says to write the vision and make it plain. What will it take for you? For me to get my sugar under control, I know what I have to do. I have to have my kids not like me because there's no sugar in my house. If I leave it, if it's there. I eat potatoes once a week now. I eat potatoes twice a day. I haven't had a baked potato in like two and a half months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do need it. Trust me. <laughs> but I had to make a decision. And then I had to put a plan into action. And if I can do that for everything in my life that is secondary, how much more urgent is it for us to have a plan and a vision and a direction for our life otherwise? Yes, I don't know what that decision will be for you. I don't. I don't know what it will take to get you to that place. Will it take the enemy attacking till you can't withstand it anymore? Till you have nothing left? The theme might be when all else fails, pray. That is not the theme. The theme is pray first. But we live in a society and a world that has put God on the back burner. And he's calling this church to put him in the forefront. Maybe you need to just change one thing in your life to increase your spiritual walk with God. But where do you want to be at the end of this year financially? Where do you want to be at the end of this year? You know what I want to be at? Three months from January 16th, I go back to my doctor, and my A1C is going to be six or under seven at the very least, from almost 12. Because I've made a decision to do that. Where is my spiritual walk going to be if I don't make a decision to do something to grow my walk with God? You know churches that do this? People come and say, can you help me pay the electric bill? And my first lesson in that as a pastor was this beautiful, beautiful man, such an amazing man of God. He said, I'm going to call the electric company right now and have them hold your electric bill. And what I need you to do, we're going to put a hold on it for three days so they won't turn off your power. 
and I need you to bring me a budget in how you're going to pay it the next month and the next month and the next month. Oh, well, I've got it. I don't need that. No, no, no. The church will pay it for you, but we need the budget of how you're going to be able to get out of this mess and not get back there. Do you know what? Nine times out of ten, rather than write a budget, they just forget about it and go somewhere else. Because deep down, they don't want what it takes to get there. When we see people that are blessed and walking in the favor of God left and right and left and right. And I'm going to get in trouble for this. And I know that. So go ahead and send me the emails and the text. Whatever. Go ahead and get your phones out. But Mr. Adams, last year we made a decision to, to up our giving. You know that because you're one of the very few in this church that sees people. I don't even see your giving statements. I know whether you give or not simply because of leadership. So you have to give to be in leadership. But our goal was to get back to Sweet Home, and now we own a home here. We made a decision to give more to God, and God has blessed abundantly through that. What would God do for you? Here's your vision for this year. God said, I want to open doors that no man can shut. What doors do you need open? Whatever that is, what are you willing to do above and beyond? Could you find social media? It's easy for some, but not for others. Sugar was a harder drug for me than the drugs I had. I don't crave alcohol. 25 years later, but I'll guarantee you one thing, a Twinkie calls to me at 3 a.m. <laughs> it tells me which stores are open. <laughs> No, I'm telling the truth. It calls my name. When I heard Hostess was doing away with the Twinkie, thank God somebody bought it out, right? The vision this year should be a vision that you write down. Hang it on your refrigerator. Every single morning when my alarm goes off, I do not want to get up and go to that gym. And some mornings... It's a miracle if I get a mile on the treadmill. Other mornings, I can do it in 14 and a half minutes, baby. And they put gains on those machines so you can take your mind off the fact that this hurts, right? <laughs> but when it comes to your spiritual walk, what is your vision? Truth be told, most of us don't have one. We gave our heart to Jesus and we're going to wait till we get to heaven and that's that, right? <coughs> that's not that. If we don't make it plain and simple and begin to put a plan into action, five years from now we'll be in the same spiritual place that we are right now. And I don't know about you, but everything around me is changing. And if I don't do something to enhance and strengthen my walk with God, I might not have a walk with God in five years. And as your pastor, here is my vision for you, 2020 vision for yourself. If you don't know how to build that, you call me. You set an appointment. We will sit and we will help you build something. We'll help you write it out if we need to. But make it plain, make it simple, and make yourself, guarantee yourself a victory that God's going to open a door and you're going to be in a place spiritually far greater than where you are right now. Instead of calling me to lay hands on your sick, you're going to be so anointed in your own spirit that Amen. you're going to say, I don't need pastor, I got this one myself. Uh -huh. Because we've had those calls over the years. My neighbor has a demon. Can you come cast it out? Are you saved? Yeah. Well, then lay hands on him. Rebuke it and cast it out. Oh, no, we don't do that stuff. <laughs> sure you do. Mark chapter 16 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. Come on. They shall cast out devils in my name. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This is things that the book says. Maybe your, maybe your regimen is 
that you get up every morning and you read the word of God with your coffee. Thank God you do that. But maybe God wants you to just start breaking it down a little bit more. Maybe you just need to turn the phone off and, and just for a few minutes, break it down a little bit more. And this is my favorite one that God has for me going. How many love Bible studies? You got the app on your phone? I love Bible studies. But God is saying, you know what? Are you sure that the guy you're reading the Bible study yeah. from is right? Challenge it. Challenge what God has shown you over the years. Not to challenge God, but to challenge your theology of how you see it. Because God might just want to give you an interpretation and you went, Closed the lid on the box and said, oh, God, I know this one. You ain't giving me nothing else out of it. Maybe, just maybe, he wants to do something different in your life. Maybe, just maybe, he wants to give you a vision this year for your personal life spiritually. Because he wants to open doors for you that you've been trying to kick down for years. And he says, I want to open doors that no man can close. That no man can close. And I'm thinking, God, what's the next step? For me, I have to reevaluate things. Plain and simple. If you don't think that's hard, take 25 years of theology and try to think it from a different angle. You tried to build a house from a different angle, babe. You know exactly where the two before should be. You can do it in your sleep. But what if God said do it a different way? Think about it differently. What if God told you to challenge what you know? What is your vision? Be honest with yourself right now. Nobody else knows. What are your budget, plan, vision? Where you want to be spiritually at the end of 2020? Where do I want to be that will change me at the end of this year? What will make a difference? Because here's what I found out. You know what I found out this morning? Your wife came into church like this right here. She was in here with bad. But she came with faith. He says, God don't ask for prayers. Amen. Glory, <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking around. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody notice how clear and sharp her voice was this morning? Come yes. On. She may not be able to speak when she leaves here, but she had a plan of action. She put it into play, and God honored it. And I will make you a promise. If you will truly make a vision for your life spiritually, God will honor it. And he'll open doors that no man can shut. He will change things. Whatever that means to you. If you don't know what that means, call me this week. Don't spew on me. Call me and say, can I come see you? Okay, let's set a time. Let's do that because then we can talk without interruption. Church, God wants to open doors for you. He wants to change things for your life. But if you don't have a plan, if you don't have a vision, you can pretty much guarantee you're going to be in the same spot next year that you are right now. Make a vision. Make a plan. Work the plan. James is not the book of Getcha. It's the book of Matter of Fact. Ooh, it's as simple as it gets. It's like Proverbs of the New Testament. Now, it really is. It's like, hey, I hear there's fighting among you. Chapter 4, verse 1. I hear there's fighting among you. It's because you've got lust in your heart. It's because you want what you want, not what God wants. If you'll get out what you want in your heart, if you'll get that out and get in what God wants, then all the fighting will go away. Well, it's my neighbor's fault. No, no, no. That's not what he said. It's pretty cut and dry. It's a pretty awesome book, actually. <coughs> Take this week and 
make a vision for your life. You want your kids to be saved? Then your vision ought to be, God, let me live a life in front of them that makes them want the God I have. Amen. Not a vision that says I turn to every other thing but God. Ooh. God, I'm asking you, and I'm writing it out plain. I want my children saved. What do I need to do to be the light for them? What do I need to do to be the light for them? It's a very simple procedure. Make a plan, work a plan. And you didn't have to pay Dave Ramsey $400. For it, right? <laughs> Father, I thank you today for your word. I thank you for the very simplistic book of James. Wow. I thank you for that one line that says, if I know what to do and I'm not putting you first, then it's sin. Thank you. God, I pray right now, before we have an altar call and we pray over the sick, we know that you're here for that. Before we pray for salvation, God, I pray right now as the leader of this church that you would give every man, woman, and child in this building a vision to be better at the end of this year than they are right now, as amazing as they are. Spiritually, let them grow in you. Give them a plan. Let them understand that doing the same thing won't get you there. Now I ask you to meet the needs of your people in your precious and holy name. Stand with me if you will.